Hey, well, what I have here today for you folks is a fantastic video about this Acer Nitro sitting next to me. And we're getting back to 1440p because that seems to be the sweet spot for most of you out there. Um, so today we're going to be covering the Acer Nitro XV320U L. V because they had to add that extra LV on at the end and all these letters and numbers so you guys know exactly which one it is. And just so you know, it is a new model. So if you're watching like an old video on a 32 inch Acer Nitro, it's probably not this one. But I know many of you are looking at 32 inch monitors and specifically 1440p. So we're gonna be testing this bad boy up and down the benchmarks today. So follow me along as we do that. So we're gonna start off with a few specs and features about this guy to get you guys introduced to this Acer Nitro. And first and foremost is the fact that this guy is 32 inches. It's a 1440p monitor. It is IPS and Splendor IPS to boot, which we'll talk about later. It is a FreeSync Premium monitor. It is a standard 144 hertz with an overclock mode for 170 hertz. And it has a fantastic feature called VRB, or visual response boost for those you, of you who may not know. Now, one of the other lovely features I don't really test in this video is the wide format capability of this monitor because it's pretty big, it's 32 inches, but it does allow you to use Quad HD in a wide format if you want it. Now, the last three specs I do wanna mention you guys is the fact that it's a one millisecond response rate IPS panel. It is HDR 400 for you guys looking for one right now, but the downside is it's 250 peak nits of brightness, which we'll kind of get into a little bit later when we do the calibration. Now, talking about aesthetics, you guys, this guy, even though it's 32 inches in size, I mean, the thing sits very sleekly on the desk. It's not as robust and it doesn't take up as much of a footprint as other 32 inch monitors do. And the back has a great aesthetic. I love the design. It kind of fits whatever you want it to, uh, but it is really cool. And the fact that the full thing is adjustable. I mean, height, rotation, tilt pan, all that good stuff that you want in a monitor. The aesthetics are there. It is only straight black with a little emblem uh, of Acer on the back, but it does have one little red accent that is actually a feature. It's a wire management little cable clip in the back. Uh, they kind of you know, it contrasts well with that black monitor on your desk. I am very pleased though, because you can tell that they put some design effort into this and didn't just throw a big clunky 32 inch on your desk and say, here you go, have fun. Now, for those of you wondering, there are two HDMI 2.0 ports, one display port, 1.4. It does have a headphone jack and there are speakers built in. So if you wanna use it in a pinch to be able to uh, listen to whatever you're playing or watching at the time, it will work for you. Let's get into some actual testing with some blur busters. And as always, I start with kind of that standard motion with the factory settings on. And we take a little bit of a pause here because I wanna just see out of the box how the motion performs. And to be expected, we're at 170 hertz refresh rate with the pixel response rate on their normal setting. They have three. They have off, normal, and extreme, and of course their VRB. But what we see, we take a little pause here in the uh, second and third frame here, actually turning out extremely well, refreshing perfectly. But as we get into that higher refresh rate, we do see a little bit of overshoot, and it's not terrible. We're talking like three, four frames to refresh. So you're not really gonna pick this up with the naked eye. You're gonna have to stop and pause on this sort of frame to see it. All right, so talking world motion blur, the synthetic benchmark for gaming in a big world kind of moving, jumping around, turning, twisting, whatever you want to call it. Here we zoom in a bit. We want to test and actually we pause. Oh my gosh, you guys, this is probably one of the few times that I've paused on this world motion blur test and both the low frame and high frame have matched up. There's almost no ghosting whatsoever. Now that bottom frame has a little teeny bit of smearing to it, but it is moving much, much faster than the top frame. So it's not a whole lot to really be upset about actually. I think this is one of the clearest images that I've seen on this test. 
Okay, so enough on that. Let's jump into the pixel response rate. And of course, as always, I start with the lowest possible setting and that is off. And we're gonna test. We have low, medium, high uh, UFOs moving, moving across the screen here. We're gonna zoom in. We're gonna kind of check them out and see what result we get here. And in fact, what we see low, medium, high is almost the same exact result between every single UFO. There's a teeny bit of overshoot teeny tiny bit of ghosting uh, but to me it would seem this is actually performing fairly well with that highest refresh rate being the worst now they are a little blurry because we're getting that double or triple image but two to three frames to refresh is not a bad deal and then slowing it down so you guys can see that you can actually see that ufo morphing over those frames so it's it's not terrible it's not a, an extreme amount of lag okay so pumping it up to normal what do we find here it should be a little bit better you know and it's about the same for that top frame middle frame but the bottom frame somehow has gotten better under the normal setting a uh, teeny bit of ghosting on both that top highest refresh rate and middle refresh rate uh, but it actually looks clearer than that at first with it being off. I can make out the objects with crisper lines than I could in the previous test with the pixel response rate being off. So this is actually a better setting in my opinion. It's an upgrade. And just to prove my point, I wanna pause again here. We go a couple more frames, we take a little pause. And what do we see? We kinda of see the same result, uh, except for you know a little overshoot in all three frames. But again, the actual image, the picture of the UFO has clear defined lines. It is sharper. So we're not seeing as much smearing or ghosting as we might see with the setting off. But there is one more setting in your traditional pixel overdrive setting. And that of course, is extreme so i kick it up a notch in hope that we see some amazing results because uh one millisecond 170 hertz refresh rate should be a fantastic gaming spot for pretty much everyone and even as we lead up to this pause you guys we see a little bit of artifacting trailing those ufos and it's even more evident uh as i pause you can actually see this kind of blue artifacting haloing effect discoloration uh, because of the lack or slowness of that pixel response rate it's actually almost like two frames behind those uh, pixels are still refreshing so it's leaving some one of those blue pixels which is the primary pixel on your panel uh, lagging leaving that trailing ghost behind so I'm not gonna say that this is extremely terrible uh, because it's fairly hard to see with the naked eye but it's probably not my preferred setting. Uh, I would go with normal most of the time. And actually, as I look at it more, it actually gets more annoying. <laughs> so the second pause here, same thing. We see even more ghosting in the middle frames there, a little bit being picked up in that bottom frame. And uh, we still, still see that blue discoloration. So I would just tell you, leave the extreme off use normal but let's test out vrb to see if that is a worthwhile setting for you guys looking for the best pixel response rate so i actually go in and i change the refresh rate to 120 hertz because the manufacturer actually recommends that you run vrb at 120 hertz uh, when you have it on and that's supposed to give you the best result so i try they actually have two settings and I tried the standard setting and then they do an extreme setting. So this first one is the standard setting and we get to our first pause and it actually isn't looking half bad. There's a very clear UFO, not really any ghosting or overshoot, very minimal. But what we see here is a bit of retention on the red pixels. It's giving this kind of artifacting to the back end of that UFO that is red. So it's kind of like that extreme setting with the regular overdrive. But I wanna pause again just to make sure I'm not seeing things and going out of my mind. And we still pick up a teeny bit of artifacting. The image is still fairly clear, but we did pick up a bit of overshoot on this particular image. Image. So to see if we can't clear that up, I go in, I change the settings, and instead of standard, I go to extreme for that VRB setting, and I wanna take a look at that here real quick. And quite frankly, I'm not seeing much difference. Yes, the image is clear, it's crisp to a degree. It has clear outlines of that UFO and a white border, but we are still picking up that noise, that red that we see at the end of the UFO. It's kind of disturbing, I don't really like it, Maybe it works better in game, but at this point, the extreme and the VRB just kind of seem to be 
almost overpowered for the actual display. But enough on all the synthetic benchmarks, let's jump into some real world gameplay. And uh, I do wanna mention you guys, this is a FreeSync premium monitor. However, it does work with G-Sync verified and tested by me. The actual FPS counter on the monitor itself doesn't work when you're using G-Sync, you do have to use the Nvidia. G-Sync. So that being said, we're going to use the RTX 3090 first. Uh, we're going to jump into a bit of Warzone and see what we can find. It is stunning. I mean, just stunning. This monitor with that 3090 and that rendering capability is probably the best looking drop in I've seen on this monitor. And we're SDR. There's no HDR here, you guys. Um, it just looks fantastic. Whether we're far away or close up, I'm getting great fidelity through and through. So I drop into gameplay, just trying to judge that motion capability. And first things first, pistol duel with this guy. And quite frankly, he takes me out. I actually pause here when I aim down sights. I get back up from laying prone, and what do I see? I see a little bunny suit, and it's making out pretty good detail. There's a little bit of fast pace action going on here, uh, but you don't see any ghosting, world motion blur, screen tearing, anything happening. Now, this is probably kind of a low. On low, medium, high, this would be like low motion handling right here. Uh, we're not really at a fast or really fast speed, but so far, looking good now i really wanted to test this one out because this is what took my team out of the match itself and i enter this building the guy shooting me from behind i try to run up the stairs thinking it's safe uh, and there happens to be a guy at the top of the stairs so i'm kind of sprinting at full speed he sees me turns to me ends up taking me out uh, but in that process i'm able to aim down sights and i kind of want to see What's the motion like? It's actually not bad. As we take a few pauses there, I do notice a few things out of place, but generally speaking, as I aim down sights, I'm able to make out my target, and it's, you know, it's performing extremely well. I haven't seen any screen tearing. There's a teeny bit of motion blur, but overall, the feeling was good. The response rate, the input lag seemed to perform on par for what I would expect, actually even a step better than what I expected with the fact that it's a 32 inch monitor. But let's say you don't have a 3090 and you wanna use it with a FreeSync Premium card from AMD. Well, that's why I brought it out to test with my 5700 XT, a couple generations old. And it's a fairly decent card, but it's not high powered by any means. Now I did have to do a bit of calibration. We're jumping into Warzone the colors were a bit dull, but I did go into AMD's setting and I did set it to Vivid Gaming and then did a teeny bit of correction on the brightness and color uh, for AMD when I used the AMD card. And you can definitely tell, right? The colors don't quite pop as much on AMD. The rendering isn't quite as good, but that's to be expected. The motion still holds up well. And as you can see, our variable refresh rate or FreeSync premium number in the top right is actually showing us exactly what's going on. And then as I look up this ladder, as I'm entering the game here, I see a guy climbing and with a bright backdrop, it's actually doing a very good job with contrast. I'm able to make out all the details of that character, even though he's far away. And uh, it's not funky with the 32 inch, you want performance like that. You want to be able to make out the smallest of details from far away. So the last bit that I want to be able to test here is using that RTX 3090 and uh, playing a little bit of Apex Legends. The color is a bit different as we see here. I'm, you know, I'm dropping into the game and we get more vibrant colors closer to like what Fortnite would be, but a little bit higher fidelity. Um, giving it a teeny bit more of a challenge. And we see great color accuracy. I mean, the lava, the volcanoes are looking awesome. That kind of icy blue on the right is just perfect. And uh, all of those colors mixing, blending well, not seeing any haziness or bad uh, black level performance or bad contrast or anything like that. You know what, I'll keep it quick. We got into a skirmish with this first team. Uh, you know, I was starting to get a couple shots off on them, taking them out. My teammates just went head in to take these guys out. It's not really the best way to approach it, but I can't fault them for it. It is fun. So I kind of make my way around to flank these guys. Rendering quality, color accuracy, contrast, black level performance. You can see into this building here. You can see the shadows uh, along the walls. The yellows, the oranges, the greens, they're coming out extremely well. A little bit tattered, but still bright. So I make my way around and this guy's a tiny little dot on the screen. I mean, he's not exactly far away, 
but I'm able to make out his movement, his character, take him down, get the shot, uh, and then move on to the next guy. I don't see his buddies laying around, so I go up these stairs, trying to think I'm gonna get the high point on this team, and uh, unfortunately, when, what ends up happening, I end up taking that guy out, but this guy comes from behind me, and very quickly, I make a quick turn, teeny bit of motion blur on that first pause, but as we start to get into it more, I'm jumping around, I'm moving, we're actually making out pretty good detail. It's not quite perfect, but even in one of these pauses here, he goes to do his charge to attack on me, I pause. I'm actually, I've got the beat on him right now, um, but he ends up taking me out, unfortunately. Throughout all of that though, I was able to make out everything that I was doing. I was actually quick enough to turn and actually get a few shots off on him, making him a little bit scared. And that's the advantage you want with a monitor in good motion. You want to be able to make that quick movement, kind of shock him a little bit, and the other person's like, whoa, these guys are modern. You want to be a, you want to be a bot. Let me tell you, not the bad bot. You wanna be accused of cheating, without cheating, actually. And so far in my testing, I've actually seen that this guy is extremely solid in all aspects of motion, input lag, pixel response rate, actual, any variable refresh rate technology, FreeSync Premium, G-Sync, whatever it is. And it's held up extremely well in first person shooter games. But that's not all I wanna test with you guys. Maybe you can call it a hack and slash. But I have some unfortunate news, and it's for any one out there that's using a lower powered card. Uh, I actually went to test out Elden Ring on this monitor, 1440p with my 5700. And uh, it actually failed on me like five or six times. Uh, it ended up crashing the computer. Now I probably could have gotten around that in some ways, but eventually I just gave up and said, screw it, we're gonna use the 3090. Uh, so that's what I did. So I pop on that HDR, you guys do a teeny bit of calibration, make sure HDR's on in the game, on on the monitor. Oh, I do wanna mention something. Let me pause here real quick as we get into Elden Ring. HDR does not automatically switch on this monitor. It's kind of a pain. You have to go in and change the monitor to HDR settings. I don't know why, couldn't tell you, but it is a bit of a pain. So with all of that on, we jump into Elden Ring. The first thing I notice, it's actually, it's very dark. I play this game a lot. 250 peak nits of brightness here set at my current settings is, you know, not exactly perfect. I can make out what's going on, but it's still extremely dark. You know, taking a little pause, we can see that it's crushing that detail out in the corners that I'm not around. You know, it's hard to make out what's going on around me other than what's in front of me. The game still looks really cool and the graphics are fantastic. I mean, this game does a great job and this monitor really brings it out. But I can't overlook the fact that with HDR on, it's just in this specific scenario, when I'm kind of in these tunnels and dungeons, it's hard to make out exactly what's going on. And even as we, you know, go out into the open, it's night out and it's just as rough. It's almost just as bad, you know? It's not unplayable, don't get me wrong. It is definitely playable, uh, but you definitely want more, uh, you want better contrast, you want better black level or shadow detail performance out of your HDR, encouraging me to tell you that maybe HDR isn't the best setting for this monitor, at least for darker games like this. Even though it was fun, it looked cool, yeah, I could I could do without it. Now here's the big benefit of not using HDR. It's with SDR you get a full host of calibration suite. It's like I said in the beginning, HDR locks down pretty much every calibration tool that you have besides the preset menus that Acer gives you. So when you're in SDR, you get access to every single calibration tool that this has to offer that works in your standard gaming lineup. So I change a few things around the actual black level. I change around brightness, contrast. Uh, it is on max brightness, everything like that. And it pulls out a bit more detail for me, actually quite a bit more. I mean, look at that color pop here. We can actually see where the shadows are supposed to be when I'm fighting this guy. And uh, we can see the light coming through. Now it's getting brighter in the day, 
but there is still a considerable amount more detail in the shadow area than there was before. I'm not gonna give it a perfect score though because most of the other monitors that I've tested that have a higher brightness, 350 or 400 peak nits of brightness, actually perform way better in this game than this monitor does. And the fact that it's 32 inches with that level of brightness doesn't exactly give you a good starting point to begin with. So, you know, we'll get to my recommendation later, uh, but take what I said, uh, Seriously, because if you're looking at this monitor for this style of gameplay, you know, I could probably point out a couple others that are better. I have just thrown tons of information at you guys to be able to unpack. So if you have any questions, definitely put it down below. From testing all the synthetic to the real world gameplay, um, I make many of these videos on the channel. So if you've made it this far in the video, please like the video, definitely. But check out the home page. We've got tons of playlists and videos just like this one, comparing 1080p, 1440p, 4K monitors in pretty much every scenario that you can think of. So if you haven't yet subscribed to the channel, we thank everybody who has. And now we're gonna jump into wrapping up with the downsides, the good sides, you know, everything in between that we can talk about and whether or not this is a monitor I would recommend. So let's jump into that, you guys. And we're first gonna start with the downsides. So I think number one's pretty clear. It's the brightness, 250 peak nits of brightness on a 32 inch monitor for any game that isn't extremely bright already is just, it's lacking, it doesn't feel great. And uh, so I have to give it a downside, a negative for that. Number two is the fact that it's pixel response rate in the extreme setting, both pixel response rate and VRB performed extremely poorly. I mean, there was artifacting, uh, the motion clarity wasn't great, and it just wasn't a setting that I would recommend you use. Although the off and normal performed really well, in my opinion. And speaking of the VRB, the visual response boost technology, technically it works and it does a good job, but it did leave that bit of artifacting implementing like that red color into the UFO that we saw. Now I didn't do any real world testing on it, uh, but from that synthetic benchmark, it tells me that I probably wouldn't need to. It would lead to a bit of smearing mess from that color being introduced uh, into the UFO. Now, I think for $399, there's definitely some upsides to this that make it worth that value. That is kind of middle of the road right now for 1440p, 32 inch monitors, so it's not too much to ask, but it's not exactly cheap. So let's get into those upsides, you guys. And first and foremost is going to be that Splendor IPS. The fidelity and overall color accuracy was one of the best that I've tested. And I said the same thing about the uh, XV272, the 4K Splendor IPS that I tested, uh, I don't know, six months ago. The color accuracy and the pop you get from it is just phenomenal. It looked really good when I was uh, diving into Warzone the first time. It just kind of blew my mind. The second benefit I want to get is mostly you think of 32 inches as being way too cumbersome. That's what she said. <laughs> and taking up a massive footprint on your desk. And I wanna tell you this one, because of all of its features and benefits that you get with it, it actually is fairly slim compared to other 32 inch monitors. Uh, the actual stand itself is, is very small and it allows so much movement that you can really fit it anywhere you want. Hey, that's what she said. And that's a plus to me. And then the third upside that I'll mention is the fact that it overclocks to 170 Hertz while still giving you full access to G-Sync compatibility and of course, FreeSync Premium. And we tested that on many FPS games. It performed extremely well. There was no kind of lag behind between the two technologies. They both gave me a similar experience. And for that, I thank Acer because not every monitor does that out there. So I've tested now, this is my third Acer Nitro and every single one of them has been extremely well. Their 4K monitor didn't quite fit the bill for the price. Uh, their 1080p monitor, you need a great graphics card to be able to get that 280 Hertz, but this, this, the XV0, I'm gonna call it the XV0 uh, for short. I'll put the actual name down below because it's pretty long. It's like XV320 UQLV. It's pretty long, but this particular monitor here, 
fits the bill for pretty much everything. However, the only person I won't recommend it to is somebody who's playing these story-based games, these RPGs, anything like Diablo, like Elden Ring, that is gonna have very, very dark scenarios. It just didn't perform well because of that brightness. But if you're an FPS player, and maybe you do a little editing on the side, maybe you do something extracurricular, watch some movies, whatever it is, this 32 inch is sweet and it absolutely fits the bill for you. So for you guys, I 100% recommend. And that's where I'll leave it. If you have any questions, put it down in the comments below you guys. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna throw up a little playlist here. It's gonna talk about, it's gonna give you access to all the other 1440p monitors that I've reviewed. So you can check those out, do your comparison. I even have some versus videos in there for you. And you can decide what the best monitor is for you. So thanks for watching you guys. And as always, I'll catch you in the next video.